Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel, Cedric here in Antwerp. And today we are not gonna taste the beer, we are gonna talk about the brewery however. Like I said in the last video, in the short announcement, uh, I will be splitting things up so I can spend a bit more time on the brewery and a bit more time on the beer and I won't have like 30 minute videos. Um, starting today, in honor of the 150th beer review that I'm doing in a minute, uh, I wanted to talk about a beer that's rather close to my heart or not necessarily the beer but actually the brewery is quite close to my heart. My link with this brewery is not only that it is in the heart of Antwerp, in the south side um, near the docks, but the brewmaster of this brewery is a personal friend of mine and actually has been my teacher for a while. Um, he taught me not everything but about half the things that I know about beer. So about fucking time that I'm talking about this brewery. Now unfortunately this has a short history. Um, because it doesn't exist anymore. It has existed for about 25 years. Uh, but then unfortunately after the Corona lockdowns it closed down. But first things first, let's start at the start. In 1996, uh, brewery at Packhaus, translated to the warehouse, was founded by Ed and his son Christoph van den Auerland. And they found a awesome building for this, namely an old warehouse, hence the name. Uh, near another bunch of old repurposed warehouses and shipyards and it is right next to the Schelde, the river. Um, the warehouse where this brewery was or actually technically still is located dates back to 1850 and they installed a brew house by SBM or Saint Sebastian Belgian Microbrewery, a subsidiary of brewery Sterkens. Of course they got to brewing, uh, they opened their own little brasserie or small restaurant next to the brewery and um, yeah, all things went well. They had uh, several beers, they brewed a classic uh, blonde, some dark beers, a light amber triple which we're gonna talk about in another video um, and I believe about a dozen specialty beers. Um, all named after uh, Antwerpian or Flemish sayings but with a link to Antwerp. For example uh, we have Trezebes which is yeah, a mock name for a, for a woman. Um, we have Signorita which comes from Signorita, uh, the Spanish where the Antwerpians got their nickname Signor from. So instead of uh, Senor and Senorita they made it Signor and then Signorita saw the light of day. And actually, funny story, um, they had a contest to name their new hoppy beer. And this contest uh, was won by Signoripa, of course, but by none less than Johan van Dijk, the owner and brewmaster of the Antwerp Brewing Company, which is on the other side of Antwerp, because Pacas is on the south side and uh, ABC is on Allensche. So actually, it's a stone's throw away. but. Apart from that, um, yeah, they had many of those names. Uh, the Zwarte Signor, uh, the, the Black Antwerpian, uh, the Mbangeleke, which we're going to talk about in depth. Um, you name it all uh, with a wink and a nudge to Antwerpian sayings or um, yeah, ways of naming things or habits. All the labels feature Silvius Brabo, the Roman soldier that mythically cut off the hand of the giant Antigon. Actually, the depiction on the labels is even the statue, the bronze statue, in front of City Hall in Antwerp. So he's probably throwing away the hand. Now, I have told this story before in another video. I'll try to find it and link it through. Um, these guys always brew with the best ingredients, all natural, unfiltered, unpasteurized. Um, and there was some room to experiment, which they did, hence the handful of beer, or actually about a dozen beers. They also have a close link to the Antwerp Beer College, a uh, beer, not a club, but more like a society, um, 
and actually a society that lives to preserve the knowledge about beer, the history of beer in Antwerp and in Brabant, in Belgium um, in general, of which Johannes Bombeke or Hans, my former teacher, was also the president. Now he's vice president, he has been president for 10 years. Uh, he is also a sort of a historian, a writer, uh, a beer writer. So yeah, the man has some knowledge. Back to the brewery itself, Brewery Pacas. In 2020, they introduced their last two beers, uh, being Teresa Beza and Signoripa, the fruit beer and the IPA. Um, but unfortunately, in the end of 2021, they had to close down and they got bought by a restaurant group. Um, a group with a few restaurants, with also a few uh, delis and stores. And currently it has a fish restaurant called Marino. Um, the brewery is still present. They also bought that brew installation itself. They didn't dismantle it. Uh, in fact, Christophe van den Ouweland actually helped making the brewery ready to brew again. And the group will be brewing their own house beers. And they are trying to attract some guest brewers to brew some specialty beers. Now, they did buy the brewery with the portfolio and it's not quite clear what they're gonna do with that. Uh, I really hope that they will maybe rebrand the beers and still commercialize it because they are all pretty awesome. Actually, that's about it. Like I said, this is gonna be a short, short history. They've existed for 25 years. They celebrated 25 years, then they closed down. They are still in the building, but unfortunately the beers aren't being brewed anymore. And even worse, not being sold anymore. So that is the short history of brewery at Pacas in Antwerp. Um, yeah, visit it when you get the chance. It's still there. It's still beautiful, nice copper kettles and everything. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you like this, uh, let me know, hit the thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, the usual, hit the bell icon so you'll get notified. And I will see you guys later on to talk about the beer itself.